You know, people talk about humility, saying humility is a trait of a good man. I agree and I disagree. People say you got to be humble for you to be a good man. I don't believe so. I'm sorry. In order for you to be humble, you must first be strong for it to be relevant. Let me repeat myself. Your humbleness can only be relevant if you are strong already. Weak people cannot pretend to be humble. They're not humble. They're just weak. If you have no power, you can't say I'm humble. I'm not going to speak out for myself because I'm humble. No, you're not humble. You're unable. You are disabled. You have no ability to speak for yourself. You have no ability to defend your cause. Therefore, you stay quiet. So you are not quiet because you're choosing. It's not by choice. It's by default. So in order for you to say that you're a good man, you first must be strong, independent, and powerful. Then make a choice in spite of my power and my ability not to react. That is humbleness. That's what we respect. The world doesn't respect humbleness uh, more than due to poverty and lack of resources. Nobody respects that. You remember the uncle in the village or in your city who has no money and nothing, uh, even though he's an uncle, okay? Probably older than your mother or your father. People don't really much respect him. They don't listen to him very much. I mean, you could sit around a table talking about some very relevant things about the family. He brings out his opinion. People don't listen to him because he has no money, no position. And this is not just because of money. You must have some form of power for your humbleness to be recognized. You know what the reason why? I mean, one of the reasons why Africa can't sit on the table of great countries. Let's talk about Security Council. You know what Security Council is. Security Council is five countries, okay? They make the rules and the choices of the world. It's the United States of America, Russia, China, France, and the United Kingdom. Those five countries, if they say A, any country in the world, let's say 190 countries say we want B. If one of those countries say we're not going to have B, we're going to have A. Well, they're going to vote for A. That is the power they have of the Security Council, the veto power. Now, Africans are asking to enter, to be part of the veto powers, or to have a seat at the Security Council. We've seen all that. One of the reasons why they cannot sit there is because the Security Council was built on power. It was after World War II. The winners of World War II got the seat at the Security Council. So it was power first. You must be strong first before you say, okay, let's have a discussion. Well, you can't change the Security Council if you have no ability. All of those countries have nuclear power. Now you have no nuclear power. You just dance, 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 and you think you're going to sit at the Security Council. It's not possible. That's what I'm talking to you about humbleness. Somebody came online one day looking at my video, said this guy, well, this guy talks about Africa, but he's not humble. Why am I supposed to be humble to you, my brother? Do, do you know me? Do we know each other? Well, why am I supposed to be humble again? Please explain to me. Humble for what? Am I here as your cousin having to be humble to you so I can pass a message? Can you not listen to my message without you paying attention to my personality? Is it about my personality or is it about the message they're going through? And generally, we all know in Africa, people ask you to be humble so they can disrespect you without you having to react, right? Well, you're a photographer. We're not going to pay you 1000 as we promised. We can only pay you 600 because, well, we had many other issues. You know, the party wasn't exactly what we expected. Therefore, we expect you to be humble and accept that. That's African type of humbleness. That's how they want you to be. They want you to be humble. Shut your mouth. Let them disrespect you. Let me criticize you. If you push back, it means you're not humble. You're not going to do that with me, my brother. Well, Uganda understand that. What's up, everybody? I hope you're doing good. It's a beautiful day. My name is Zach. Thank you for stopping. You know you've done the right choice. This is when we talk about the motherland. We don't sugarcoat here, okay? We love you. We want you to stay. No doubt about that. Click on the button, subscribe so we can see each other every single day. And you know, here we talk about the motherland. No sugarcoating. Uganda understands. Humbleness takes you nowhere. Well, Uganda is making history, my brother. They're launching Africa's first largest AI infrastructure project. Congratulations. Pigama coffee, yeah, Pigama coffee. Clap your hand in Swahili. That's Pigama coffee. Uganda understands the assignment and they're building the largest Africa's AI infrastructure project. It's called the Ionian Project, centered around USIO sovereign supercomputers. This marks a major leap in digital sovereignty and innovation in the continent. Congratulations to Uganda. I mean, this is the president of Uganda, Uranium 70. He's not lacked by everybody, but clearly he's doing something, okay? I mean, always lacked by everybody, nobody. I mean, he's not perfect. He's a human being. He makes his mistakes. Some people loathe him. I mean, some people loathe God. They hate God. I'm not saying Museveni is God. I'm saying he's not perfect. But let's stick to this. Let's talk about this. Great project. Major infrastructure project. Uganda is building a 100 megawatt hyperscale AI project inside a 600 megawatt Karuma hydropower. So they have a hydropower named Karuma. 600 megawatts. Inside that hydropower, they're going to build an AI factory. The biggest in Africa. Why is this big done? Because this is very important. Because you, 
Uganda wants to be one of the first countries to retain AI compute power within Africa. Number two, train models on African data and languages. So AI will be trained in African models and languages in Africa. Number three, support local innovation in healthcare, education, and research. Isn't that a beautiful thing? My brother, nobody respects humble people with no money. No one respects humble people with no power. No one respects toothless lion. Nobody. Oh, that lion such a powerful lion, but he has no teeth. No, you gotta have teeth, okay? Security Council is people with nuclear power. Now, AI is also power coming. It's powerful. If you don't jump on the train, you're gonna be left behind. You're gonna be crying, yeah, why, why is the world unfair? The world is unfair, my friend. There's no such thing as fairness. It doesn't exist. It's in your mind. That's your mentality. Fairness only comes when you're strong. That's why the strong people write history. The history you read in books is by the strong people. The lions write the history. The gazelle don't write history. And I know a lot of you here, you, you fantasizing on when the gazelle is going to write his own history. No, you can't be a gazelle. Gazelles don't write history. It's only lions. You need to transform. What are the goals here? Goal number one, data sovereignty. Okay, so reduce Africa dependence on foreign data center. My brother, your cell phone, your identity, your name, your date of birth is in the data center that belongs to Europeans and Americans, not yours. So you have no power over your own identity. Number two, local languages. AI is going to be enabled to research and build on models in African languages. Why is African languages important? China understood that. China, after World War II, was a poor country, very poor. They only have rice. That's what they had. I know Africans cry out, you cry over uh, slavery, colonialism. China was also part of the countries that suffered. They suffered a lot, trust me. Maybe not on the same scale, but this long, long, longevity-wise, but they suffered a lot. But they didn't cry over themselves. They understood the assignment. In China, people learn in Chinese, okay? They go to university in Chinese. So they built, they model on Chinese model. Today, China produced the most engineers and doctors and everything in the world. They don't learn in English and French. In the meantime, French-speaking African countries mock each other when you don't pronounce French properly. For them, in order for you to be intelligent, you must pronounce like a white French man. So for the English person, it's going to be, you, you got to have an accent like a British. If you have no accent as a British person, you, you, you're you not intelligent. So you must have some ba'a in your braid. You must spray some ba'a and have some water. If you don't water and ba'a, it means you have no intelligence. That's for the French African people. That is the level of colonialism that you find in these countries colonized by France. It's sad. Africa need to build on their own AI based on African languages. Chinese did with Chinese, not with English or French. If you go to China, you don't see no English or French in the machine. It's Chinese, Mandarin and whatever. Africa need to do that. You can't become a genius person with other people's language. And I know we only sp we speak in Swahili because Swahili, uh, sorry, English is the language that links us here because, I mean, you don't want to learn Swahili, the most spoken language in Africa. Let's get started. Number two, digital independence, okay? This position Uganda as a regional tech hub and AI leader. Congratulations to Uganda. Beautiful country. Look at this country. It's amazing. Some of the partiest people I've ever met and the nicest Nyash, if you're looking for Nyash, my brother. <laughs> Go check Uganda Nyash, okay? Forget about the Nyash. Now, there are plenty positive things coming with AI, okay? Good things about AI is about like incident detection. Let's look at China. Chinese model is very interesting. They have AI all over the country. In China, there's nothing you can do and be undetected it impossible they have cameras every single way now the good thing about ai you know enabled countries like china is like incident detection the ai identify for instance an accident in the road okay or illegal parking right what does ai do it instantly dispatch responder faster so the responders go to you so if, if you don't park correctly yeah they come and correct you it is good yes it is good but you can you make a mistake yes would you like to be spared when you make a mistake yes now it is good in that sense i don't know okay but ai can censor all that stuff and send data number two ai has sensors okay like in china let's see the advantage of ai okay ai system analyze feeds they look into traffic okay they observe cameras and gps's you see like google google you know google tells you where there's traffic jam and stuff now in china it's advanced they can see the road and actually suggest you a better route in fact a, a trigger lights you know street lights in a moment so that the traffic flows better meaning if this light is red and that one is red and there are people coming this way uh, the red light on the second line will be greened so the people can 
pass. By the time it's red, this one is green and there's no traffic jam. So it makes the flow easier. It's reduced traffic jam in China by 15%. That is a beautiful thing. Okay, you see some positive things, but AI doesn't come with no negative. Negative number one, you have no more, pro no more privacy. It's finished. They know who you were talking to. They know the side chick because they saw you, the camera saw you, everything saw you. They know how often you go to that house. They can transfer those data to the main lady. I mean, if walk to court if you go to divorce or if she unjustly want to divorce you then they can track you say okay we can see here he was here and there matter of fact if you have something negative to say to the government or about the government then you're in trouble so freedom of speech freedom of mobility you know it's reduced now it is beautiful yes now what happens if this technology falls within the hand of a dictator or somebody very dangerous that becomes a problem okay that becomes a problem let me know how you feel about this fellas like i said earlier humility is beautiful okay but don't be humble with weakness it's not humility you're just weak you gotta be strong first i think people must be intelligent you must be able to stand your ground to speak your mind before you choose to be humble you can't be okay i mean illiterate i have no ability to defend myself that's why i'm humble no you just you're just a weak person you, you survive behind other people. Let me know how you feel about this, fellas. It's always a great pleasure. We want you here. We love you. This is, where you, brother, this is your home. I mean, this is where you gotta be. We're gonna have podcasts from this week. We're going to launch lots of podcasts. We're going to discuss subjects, multiple subjects, you know, social, speak about different countries. You know what it is. Let me know how you feel about this. We want your comment. Is this a good move by Uganda? Or is this dangerous? Because uh, you must remember, Ugandan president has been there for a long time, okay? Now, do you think he's trying to do this for the goodness of the people or he's doing this for his own personal? interest now i personally believe he's doing this for the goodness of the people let me know how you feel about that god bless